Hello friends, I'm recording inside today because I've been, well, a bit under the weather and as soon as I go outside I start coughing and having a coughing fit. I also will probably be coughing during this video, so you're probably going to see a lot of little cut edits where I just spare you that uh, noise. Today I would like to share something that I think is actually pretty remarkable. Now this is that I was wrong and I was correct. And I shared with you some information that was absolutely right, and I misled you. All at once, all about the same information. How can this be? Today I'm going to share some uh, very interesting news about willpower, and we'll get a chance to see what this says about science, in general, and about human assumptions and our worldview. All right, let's dive deep. For years, I have been teaching a pretty basic principle about willpower. Now, I learned this principle from reading a book. I'll leave a link in the description. And this book shared a body of research which said that willpower is basically like a battery pack, a battery pack that can grow stronger over time. So in courses, in person, I've said, if you want to build up your willpower, there's a pretty simple formula. Here's what you do. You have to challenge your willpower every single day. And you need to do so in a way that doesn't max you out, that you don't break. If you do that, you build up your willpower a little bit, and the next day you'll have more willpower store than you did the day before. But throughout the day, if I'm trying to take on too many willpower tasks at once, I will break and I'll kind of basically reduce my battery pack. And it's interesting because even though I was spousing this and Rebecca and I had read a book together about it, she always said, I just don't feel like this feels right, Kenton. And I didn't really listen to her. I just kept spouting on about how willpower worked. I like to read studies. The studies to me seemed like they were well done, were very conclusive. This is how willpower works. But then another researcher, and I'll cite everything down in the description, all these uh, studies. Another researcher came along who said, let's take a different tack here and look at this from a different angle and started to do some research that showed that when people came and they believed that willpower was a battery pack and that if they did something that tested their willpower, it would drain their willpower and they wouldn't have as much a little bit later on, that was found to be true for those people. However, people who had a belief that when you exercise your willpower, it automatically strengthens your willpower. And thus, if you really strain your willpower, and then you have to take on another willpower task shortly afterwards, you will be stronger willpower wise, that those people had more willpower for that secondary task. This was shocking and amazing to me. Not that it should be, really, but the implications of it kind of hit me pretty hard. Because if we stop and we think about this, this is not just about willpower. First, it says something about science. So science is this great system that tries to look at things as objectively as possible, and we can do research scientifically, but even when we have research that very conclusively shows something, it doesn't guarantee that we've looked at that thing from all angles, all possibilities. And as we know, human minds, we love to have answers. So once we have an answer, then we tend to stick with that and have trouble seeing outside of that box. Now, granted, I took psychology in college and I finally stopped going to psychology classes because I felt it was being touted as a science and 
it felt very vague as a science, trying to pin down things like human emotions. But still, here we have a case where studies were done and they showed that this is the way things were. Enough that I felt pretty convinced. And this isn't just with science. This is with any field of endeavor that attempts to understand the world. In our attempts to understand the world, even if it's just in your personal experience, trying to understand a friend and what they're going through, what's, what they're meaning with some words that they've spoken to you. When we get locked into one angle, then we miss out on the possibility of other explanations, other ways to interpret the data. Or, as was the case in these willpower studies, the unseen factor that our beliefs and the way that we were setting up our experiment, the setup of the experiment was determining the outcome. But even more intriguing for me is what this says about belief. Because I thought willpower worked a certain way. And thus, that's how it worked for me. And I passed that belief on to students. Maybe if you watched a video of mine where I talked about this, or took a, a video course, pass that on to you. And thus you learned essentially an ineffective way to build willpower, even though I thought I was giving you the most effective way possible. Now I've switched my belief. And what's happened with my willpower? Well, very, very interesting. It's transformed just by learning this, just by learning this, because learning it switched the belief. By learning it now, my willpower is much, much stronger because I don't believe that I need to baby walk along. I believe that I can take on powerful willpower tasks and say, you know, what? I'm just going to quit that. I'm done with it. And I know that that's only going to make my willpower stronger. This is a very different belief, but super effective for me. So, wow, how many things are like that in life? Now, this is in the realm of psychology. So maybe we think this doesn't apply to other things in life, but Let's face it, most of our experiential life, we could argue that all of it is psychological. But even without that all of it argument, we won't go into that. Most of our experience of life has to do with interacting with other people, has to do with our own thoughts and feelings and emotions about what we experience around us. Arguably, this is the most important kind of knowledge or subject to have awareness of in our lives and how much of our knowledge about ourselves, about our emotions and how we deal with them, about what our body is capable of, about how quickly we can learn, about traits like how patient we are. What if these are more affected by our beliefs than we know? And what if we changed our beliefs? The coolest thing about this is that it's fun to experiment with. We don't necessarily have to have the answers, but if we entertain for a moment that belief can affect willpower that effectively, then maybe I can start playing with some other things because we all have these beliefs, right? I'm overall a good person. I'm overall a bad person. I'm temperamental. I'm easily frustrated, I'm anxious, whatever it is, what if we try changing those beliefs and just play with it? We probably maybe have resistance to this sometimes because we can often identify with our beliefs. I know I do. But if we step back from that for a moment, then we just have permission, we give ourselves permission to play. And that playfulness, that's all it has to be. It's just playfulness. So I say, I am a very impatient person. And I say, okay, Ken, let's challenge that. Let's just sit next to a window and stare at the window at the birds for an hour. And I believe you can do it. 
And then when I do that, I stop and I go, wait, wow, maybe I have to question this I belief, this idea that I'm impatient because I just sat and stared out a window for a whole hour. We do this with students at Rewild U, especially with social anxieties. People who were pretty afraid to really have much of any social interactions. And we take them into town and have them approach strangers. And when done in a playful way, it ended up having some really fun and funny stories. But almost everybody felt like, yeah, I got to see the world a little bit differently and see other people differently. So here's my challenge for you today. It is to pick one belief you have about yourself. And I'm talking about a limited belief and try replacing that limited belief with a less limited or unlimited belief. So let's take patience again, since we've already used it. If you think you're impatient, then say, you know what? I believed I'm impatient my whole life, but today I'm switching that over and I'm going to believe that I am one of the world's most patient people. And when I'm going to be standing in line at the grocery store, instead of getting out my phone or tapping my foot or wondering how quickly this line is going to move, I'm just going to sit there in perfect peace and perfect patience and wait my turn. Give this a shot and see if you can transform one belief. Now, granted, it's easier when we have studies or whatever it is. If I believe in science, then when I read a study, it's going to help shape my beliefs. So that willpower study and then the follow-up willpower studies help shift and transform my beliefs about willpower. However, I have found that I can also do this with almost any belief I have. And I'm guessing you can too. Now I'm just beginning experimenting with this over the last month or so. So give it a try. Share with me your own experiences with it. And we'll learn from each other. Now, if you're regular here, I've got to say that we are, yes, going to do another live stream, but we are going to do it when we are not coughing anymore. So it might be a little bit because Becca, myself, yeah, super coffee. And I'm going to try to believe that I can heal from this very, very quickly and be back to my normal voice and not coughing anymore. And maybe that will speed me along. Share in the comments anything you've experienced with the power of belief dragging you down or lifting you up. Obviously, this has a lot to do with the placebo effect and the power of placebo. So if you have thoughts about that, jump in down in the comments. Share your knowledge, your wisdom, and your thoughts and feelings. Love to talk with you all in the comments. And we'll see you down there. Mm -hmm.